And now we're going to hear from Mr. Farage for the EFDD group. But, so Mrs. Smith goes to Brussels and you give her five minutes to speak at one o'clock in the morning. It's about the same treatment that David Cameron got when he came to announce the referendum. At least this time the French president didn't leave the table to go to the bathroom. And when Mr. Juncker was asked by a British journalist how the negotiations were going. He said, poof, or oh, I can't really do Gallic shrugs very well. Uh, but the impression is that you're simply too busy to even discuss Brexit or to take it seriously. Um, basically, you're hoping that we'll change our minds. Mr Tusk alluded to that a couple of months ago. And I know there's been a long tradition here, whether it's with Denmark or France or Ireland or the Netherlands, the when there's a democratic referendum, you try to either ignore it or overturn it. And again today we heard Mr Juncker urging the Dutch government to ignore the referendum result on the Ukraine. Frankly, the whole thing's a disgrace. And it's even worse that it's supported by quislings in the British Parliament. People like Nick Clegg and Ed Miliband who were desperate to keep Britain inside this awful single market. Well, I'm sorry, but it simply isn't going to happen. There are 17.4 million people who could not have been clearer. We voted to say we want our country back, and in the end, that is what is going to happen. I have to confess, though, that Mrs May's position in her five minutes was somewhat curious. For her to be arguing that Britain must have a full vote and a full say in all EU affairs up until the time we leave is a very mixed message. And I've seen already this morning that some here take it as a sign of weakness. We need to get on with it. Every single day that goes by is a lost opportunity. And you only have to see that after seven years of negotiation, the proposed trade agreement with Canada, having been vetoed by the Walloons, absolutely proves to you that in a modern 21st century global economy that the European Union simply isn't fit for purpose. And I want us to get on with it because this club's very expensive. We're paying in net £30 million every day. Now, some will argue it's a bit less, some will argue it's a bit more. Either way, it is too much. We're helping to finance this monthly travelling circus to Strasbourg. And worst of all, I've now discovered that up to 5% on your staff regulations, up to 5% of employees every year are allowed to retire five years early and receive full pay and entitlements for five years for doing absolutely nothing. I mean, nowhere else in the world would allow this sort of thing to go on. So I want us to get on with it. And interestingly, I met a large number of Scandinavian businesses the other day and they're worried. They're anxious. And why? Because they know that the United Kingdom is the Eurozone's biggest export market in the world. And they want to crack on. They know that the EU has trade deals with several countries in the world that involves no free movement of people. And their logic is, if we can do a deal like that with Mexico, why on earth wouldn't we do it with our most important trading global partner? And that actually is common sense coming from European businesses, common sense, I think, coming from most people in the United Kingdom. The only obstacle appears to be the high priests of Eurofederalism in this room today. If you think by, if you think by delaying Brexit, if you think by stopping Brexit, you are going to help your own businesses, your own industries, you're wrong. It's in the mutual interest of all of us to get on with this and conclude a sensible, straightforward tariff free deal. Herr Abgeordneter Farage, darf ich Sie mal was fragen? Mr. Haben Sie die Herren Kleck und Miliband als Quieslinge bezeichnet? Ist das richtig? And Miliband as Quislings? I certainly did, yes. Ich möchte nur darauf hinweisen, dass Herr Quiesling like der Anführer der Nazi-Kollaborateure in Norwegen war. Uh, ich finde es völlig unangemessen, dass Sie demokratisch gewählte Politiker damit vergleichen.
Nehmen Sie das Mikrofon. Nehmen Sie das Mikrofon. Okay. Oh, I'm not allowed to answer. Oh, fine. Oh, well, there we are. Isn't it lovely? He did it against the interest and the will of his own people. And the point I'm making about Messrs Clegg and Miliband is they are refusing to accept a democratic result, just as Mr Juncker is refusing to accept the Dutch referendum. There is something fundamentally wrong here. Zumindest haben diese Männer ihr Volk nicht mit gefälschten Zahlen im Wahlkampf kontrolliert, wie Sie das gemacht haben. Das Wort, das Wort hat jetzt.